Lastly, the last game we'll, we'll talk on briefly, uh, five Florida State at Florida. They win 24-15, to closer game than most expected. But in my opinion, I thought Tate Rodemaker played great. First game, tough at the swamp, right? It, I mean, it's a tough environment to play at. You're trying to get build connections with the wide receivers. You only had a week to do so. You get hit hard as shit. You stand up. You, you, you mm. make some big throws. Keon Coleman had some drops too in his defense there. And then Trey Benson, I mean, he stepped up. When you've got a backup quarterback, and you know this too, Cody, when he, when he's frantic, when things aren't going right, you're down 12-0 after the after mid, mid-second quarter. Um, three touchdowns, 95 yards, 19 carries, showed out. Johnny Wilson also helped him out there. But, again, this is a team that a lot of people are hoping loses against Louisville and um, that doesn't make it. You know, They're saying, hey, whoever makes the CFP, they need to be the one seed to face Florida State because that's going to be an easy win. But – I'm just saying, you got a month after that ACC game. If they were to win that, you never know the kind of connection they can build. The deeper, di- deeper dive into the playbook. Maybe Jordan Travis helps them out even more. But we doubted TCU last year. We saw what happened. We saw in 2014. We doubted Ohio State when they snuck in. We saw what happened there. Now we saw the other side of things where maybe a Notre Dame team made the playoff. They got waxed. We saw Michigan State make the playoff. They probably shouldn't. We they got waxed. So I see both sides of it. But I mean, with this defense for Florida State and what I saw on the pass rushing side of things. I mean, six sacks against a good Florida, you know, offensive line. I'm not really counting out Florida State yet, but that's me personally, Cody. I don't know what you thought, your thoughts about the game, and then what the potential is for Florida State. I think if they win against Louisville, they should be in, right? Yeah, I think 13-0 and Florida State undefeated, win over LSU, mm-hmm. um, going through the ACC undefeated. They have to be in. Um, I will say this, though. To me, this game came down to Florida – is the most undisciplined football team I've ever seen. Mm. I've ever seen. And it's like, when's the last time you saw a player get kicked out for spitting? Yeah. Like, come on. Come on. Like, getting kicked out for spitting, clear taunting, and right in front of the referee. Like, I'm, like, I'm all for talking shit. I'm a trash talker. I, like, I talk trash with the best of them, but like, I always knew if I see a referee looking at me with his hand on his flag, it's time for me to shut up. Mm -hmm. And just, there's no, like, look, man, I'm a coach right now. And there would be nothing that would make me angrier than watching my player. Bates damn near staring at the ref and continuing to do something stupid that affects our football team in a negative way. Like every, it felt like every time once Florida was up 13, nothing, which they were up 13, nothing by the way, in this game, Mm. every time they were up 13, nothing, it felt or 13 to seven, or it was a close game and they needed to stop. Somebody on their team did something dumb to either get kicked out. Like their targeting penalty, the targeting penalty that they had, it was Clearly, he's sliding. Don't touch him. Again, just it just it goes to show the lack of institutional control that Billy Napier has on his football team, and it's really, really sad to see. So Florida had a field goal to be up 15-14 early in the second half. Look at these drives. Three plays, two yards. Three plays, seven yards. Three plays, yep. negative seven yards. Four yep. plays, negative five yards. Yep. Three plays, negative 12 yards. Yep. I'm not surprised. How do they, I don't understand how they keep them after what happened there. The ups and downs during the season, that Tennessee win looks worse. What we've seen with yeah. Tennessee recently, like it, it doesn't look like a good win. And then the fact that, you know, you've got coaches snatching players and players pushing coaches too. I agree with you, the undisciplinedness there. And to be up in an environment like that with a backup quarterback, man. But for Florida State, I mean, I don't want – I mean, as a football fan for both of us, do we want Florida State in with a backup quarterback? No, but you got to be optimistic and you got to be realistic. Like, ACC champ undefeated. If they don't make it in there, I don't know how it looks for the committee. And I don't look how it looks for the committee eyes. I don't see, honestly, if a team goes out with a conference champion, if they're out, or I mean, maybe like a head-to-head, like if Alabama were to get in over Texas, if they do beat, if they do beat Georgia, like – 
Do you think somehow though the committee is like, all right, f it, like whatever we're feeling here, it doesn't matter because the model's changing next year to twelve teams, or do you think it kind of? I mean, do you think it kind of matters the way they approach things? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, the I'll say it: the first year of the playoff, right? Uh, Oregon was the one seed, I think, and Flor or Oregon was the two seed, and yeah, because that three, year, yeah, yeah, because. Yeah, Florida State was undefeated and Oregon was 12 and 1 that year. And I'll take it a step further. I think Alabama was 12 and 1 and was the one seed playing against the fourth seed Ohio State that was 11 and 1 or mm. 12 and 1. And so it's like we've seen the p committee put one loss teams over undefeated teams in the in the past. So mm. the precedent's already been set. Sorry to say it Florida State, the precedent's been set. 